Okay, so um, uh, as I said in the previous video, um, I'm going to do uh, uh, another video just on NFA to DFA uh, conversion. So um, let me get my colors, okay. So uh, the NFA to the DFA uh, conversion is essentially just an algorithm that you follow, um, which is uh, usually pretty simple to, to follow, okay? So um, the idea is given an NFA N, uh, N is a, is a five topo here. How can you convert this NFA N to a, a DFA M uh, with a, a, a sort of different, different set of states, uh, transition function, initial function, and final states, but of course the alphabet remains the same. So um, instead of sort of just reading through this, I'm going to illustrate it with an example, okay? So suppose you have this uh, NFA uh, M here. So this is your NFA, um, NFA M, okay? You wanna convert it to a, a, a DFA, okay? So um, how do you do this? Well, essentially you, you, uh, you might remember this from, from the lecture already, but you create a, a grid, okay? You create a grid and you start your grid. So your grid has uh, three columns. The first column is going to correspond to the states uh, in your converted DFA, okay? And you always start with the, the set that contains your initial state Q0, okay? And then from that set Q0, you check what are the reachable uh, uh, states given input zero and given input one, okay? Um, and then if you have any new states that appear here, uh, so in zero or in one, then you add them to the states here and you essentially recursively do this um, until no more states uh, uh, sort of appear. So let's actually do it so, uh, as opposed to, to describing it. That's going to be a lot clearer. So let's say uh, for, for Q0 here, if you're in uh, Q0 and you read a, a zero, you're either going to go back to yourself, okay? So because of this zero, or you're going to go to Q1. So you're either going to go to Q0 or to Q1. If uh, instead you read a, a one, then from Q0, the only place you can go is back to Q0, okay? And so now I see that I've created a, a new state Q01. So I'm essentially just gonna repeat the process. So we have that here. So uh, as I said before, I have Q0, uh, which goes to both Q0 and Q1 when it reads zero. Okay, this is a new state. So this is, um, this is new, okay? Because it's a new state that I've never seen, I'm going to add it to the first column here. Okay, I'm gonna add it to the first column and essentially um, do the same uh, process, okay? So from Q0, um, given input zero, I know that I can go to both Q0 and to Q1, okay? But now I also have to, I have to do it with Q1, okay? So from Q1, if I read a zero, well, in this case, delta Q1 zero is empty, okay? It's empty, meaning that uh, these are the only reachable states from Q0 and Q1, okay? And then I do the same thing for when I read a one. When I read a one and I'm in Q0, I get uh, Q0. And then when I read a one and I'm in Q1, then I can go to Q2. So I can go to Q2. And uh, these are all the sta states that are reachable from Q0 and Q1 given one. And this, this guy is also new. This guy is new. So I put it in the first column here, okay? So then um, now I essentially do the same process, but for zero, Q0, and Q2. So given Q0 and input zero, I know that I'm going to go to Q0 and Q1. If I'm in Q2 and I read zero, um, in this case, this is like Q1 also going to give me the empty set. So in a way, you can also think of this as Q0, Q1, and then doing a union with the empty set. Because really what you're doing is you're taking delta um, Q0 given zero, and you're doing union delta Q1 
to uh, give it zero. So essentially these states are the ones in here, okay? And then you say you do the same thing for one. In this case, uh, if you're in Q0 and you read a one, then you can only go back to yourself. You can only go back to yourself. And from Q2, uh, that's, that's also going to be the empty set. If you're in Q2 and you read a one, that's going to be the empty set. So the only set that you can reach is Q0, okay? Um, so then this, you don't get any more uh, states. So you can sort of stop this process. And now the only thing that's left to do is to draw the DFA. So to draw the DFA, each of the elements in this first column here becomes states. So the set Q0 becomes a state, the set 01 becomes a state, and the set 02 becomes a state, okay? The initial state is always going to be Q0 alone, okay? So that's going to be my initial state. It's always going to be that, okay? And I need uh, my transitions and my final states. So my transitions, I can essentially just get them from here. This is essentially like a delta for uh, the converted DFA, okay? So essentially just reading for zero one when you're in Q0, Q0, Q1, and Q0, Q2, you get to these transitions. And then for the uh, final states, for the final states, okay, um, the final states in this DFA are going to be the states that contain at least one final state, okay? So um, for instance, Q0 is not going to be in final state because we know that initially the, um, in our initial NFA, the only final state was Q2, okay? So the set that contains Q0 doesn't contain a final state because it doesn't contain Q2. In fact, the only final state here is going to be Q0, Q2 because that's the only state that contains uh, uh, Q2. Q2 is in here and that's the only place where Q2 is in here. Remember Q2 is of interest because Q2 is a final state, okay? So then that's why I make this guy a final state, okay? So now an exercise for you. Um, I, I encourage you again to pause the video and uh, try to do it yourself and we'll go over the solutions uh, in a moment. Okay, so um, welcome back, I guess. So if I have this NFA and I want to convert it to a DFA, I essentially just need to um, apply the algorithm I, I, I just talked about. So don't worry, this is just, uh, I've, I've already just set this up uh, to go a bit quicker. This is the same NFA as before, okay? And remember, I have my sort of data structure here, which uh, has as the first column, these are, the states in my converted, that's going to be the states in my new, newly converted DFA. And this A and B, this A and B um, is going to be, uh, are, are the, the symbols in my alphabet. Notice if my alphabet sigma, so here, the assumption here, which maybe some of you were thinking about, and if you were, then that, that was a sort of great question. Uh, my the implicit assumption is that my alphabet is a b here, okay? Because otherwise, if it was maybe a b c, then what I would need to do, what I would need to do, is I would need to add an extra column here for c, okay? But a a question for you actually, so a a question that um, I'm not going to answer. I'm going to make you think about it. If if you have uh, let's say uh, the alphabet A, B, C, okay? Is this going to take um, more states? So uh, in the worst case, in the worst case, is this going to create more states in your DFA um, as um, if your alphabet is A, B, okay? So I want you to think about this. And when you answer this question, really try to think about what this algorithm is doing, okay? Okay, so um, this is for you. This is like an FYI. Um, I'm going to just uh, erase that because that's where I'm going to drop my DFA. Um, okay, so um, I essentially start my, my, uh, my, my procedure here. So I'm in Q0. If I read an A, okay, 
So I'm in Q0. If I read an A, where can I go? Well, here I can't go here because that requires a B. But here, notice that I can use a lambda transition. So notice that lambda A is the same as A. Okay, so I'm going to use the lambda for free. It doesn't cost anything, so I'm going to use the lambda to go to Q2. And then I'm going to use the A. I'm actually going to use the input A to go back to Q0. So I know that from Q0, I can go to at least itself. But what some of you might have missed is um, lambda A. Uh, well, so, so A is equal to lambda A. And lambda A is also equal to lambda A lambda. Because you're concatenating again, you're concatenating the empty string. Concatenating the empty string leaves your string unchanged. So that means that um, if I want to trace this here, if I'm in Q0, I use a lambda for free. Then I use the A. So I have no more symbols left. But I can use my lambda again for free and end up in Q2. So that means I can also end up in Q2. And those are, in fact, the only two states that I can go to. Okay. Then if I'm in Q0 and I see a B, if I see a B, then the only place I can go is uh, Q1. Okay. So here, notice I've gone two new states. I've gone uh, 0, 2, and 1. Okay. So I'm going to add both of these to my data structure. Um, and I'm going to repeat the process on them. Okay. So if I'm in, so let me make this clean. If I'm in zero or two and I read an A, where can I go? Well, I know from the previous sort of calculation, if I'm in Q0, I can go to Q0 and Q2. If I'm in Q2, if I'm in Q2 and I read an A, so let's see, I'm in Q2 and I read an A, I can't go this way because that's uh, not an outgoing edge. So I can only go this way back to Q0, but Q0 is already here. And then I could also go back to Q2, but Q2 is already there. So essentially, I just go back to myself. Okay. Then for B, if I'm in Q0 or Q2, and I read a B, where can I go? Well, uh, let's start with, with the Q2, just with Q2, sorry, just to go faster. If I'm in Q2, and I read a B, then the only place I can go is actually, well, in fact, nowhere. Because here you see that delta Q2B is the empty set. Okay, so I don't get anything from reading Q2. So maybe from reading Q0, I get, I get something. Well, if I read Q0, um, and if I'm in Q0 and I read a B, then I can go to Q1. And that's the only place I go to. Okay. Um, and so notice that Q0 and Q02 are actually looking very alike. And that's normal. That's because uh, when you think about it, that's because delta Q2 um, A is the same as delta Q2, as delta, sorry, Q0 A, and delta Q2 B is the empty set. Okay, so it's not surprising that uh, I don't get any new states here. But for Q1, something interesting is going to happen. I am going to get new states. If I'm in Q1 and I see an A, then I can either go to myself or to Q2. So I can either go to myself or to Q2, okay? If instead I read a, so let me clean this up again. If instead, uh, instead when I'm in Q1, I read a B, the only place I can go is to Q2, okay? So I get the set Q2. So notice here that one, two, and two are new states. So I add both of them here, Q1, Q2, and Q2, OK? Um, all right, so essentially, I repeat the same procedure again. So uh, if I'm in Q1 and I read an A, then I know from the previous argument that I can go to Q1 and to uh, Q2, right? Um, and then if I'm in Q2 and I read an A, uh, what's interesting here is I can also add another state. I can add from Q2 reading A, I can add Q0 because Q0 is reachable from Q2 uh, when you read an A. And so clearly I can't, I can't go further than that because 0, 1, 2 are the only states I have. Okay. Then I do the same thing for uh, B. Uh, if I'm in uh, Q1 
and I read, if I'm in Q1 and I read a B, the only place I can go is Q2. And remember, delta Q2B is the empty set, so I can automatically just close this guy. Okay, so notice here that I've gotten a new state, Q0, Q1, Q2, which I'm going to add here. Remember, whenever you get a new state, just quickly add it so you don't forget it. Um, otherwise, you, you'll obviously run into some trouble. Okay, so now uh, let's do it for A and B. So if I'm in Q2, okay, and I read an A, then uh, I can either go to Q0 or if I go to Q0 and then I use my lambda for free, I can go back to myself. So I can go to Q0 and to Q2. Now, if I'm in Q2 and I read a B, notice that we said that the transition function is the empty set. So essentially what it is, is you get the empty set. And in this case, don't ignore the empty set. The empty set also becomes a, um, a state, okay? And it's actually a, a very uh, easy state to do. Okay. So um, there's no new states that, that have been created other than 0, 1, 2 and the empty set. So now I go to 0, 1, 2. If I'm in 0, 1, 2, so if I'm either in 0, 1, or 2, and I read an A, where can I go? Well, I know from Q0 that I can read a Q0 and a Q2. And I know from Q1 that reading A, I can go back to myself. So in fact, I get the same thing, okay? Now, if I'm in Q0 or Q1 or Q2, and I read a B, where else can I go? So again, let's clean this up. Uh, if I'm in Q0 and I read a B, I can go to Q1. So I can go to Q1. If I'm in Q1 and I read a B, I can go to Q2. So I can go to Q2. And uh, Q2 reading B gives me nothing. Remember, it's the empty set. So I can, I can close uh, this guy up. So here I haven't gotten any new states. So I, I don't need to add anything here. And then for the empty set, okay, for the empty set, this is a property uh, that you should, you should know. If your state, so, so this is very loosely speaking, if your state is the empty set, then for any symbol A, it's always going to give you the empty set because you can't escape the empty set. It's kind of like a black hole, a black hole, okay? So then that means that if you're in the empty set and you read an A, you go to the empty set for A and for B. Okay, so um, I think I'm done with this process. I haven't um, added any new states anymore. So the only thing that's left to do is to uh, draw the DFA. Okay, so let's do it. Let's draw the DFA. So again, remember my initial state is always going to be Q0. Okay, so it's going to be the set containing Q0. Okay. Um, for the final states, so I know I always said when you write your, your final state, you, when you write your initial state, check if it's a final state. I'm going to do this at the end just for this algorithm. But in general, when you write a DFA or an NFA, it's good to always check if your initial state is a final state, okay? Um, so uh, if you're in Q0, right? And uh, because this is a DFA, you can either read A or B, and you must read either A or B, okay? So um, the transition is essentially gonna be given by the table you just created. So if you're in Q0 and you read an A, then you go to uh, zero two. So I'm going to write them as numbers instead of sets because it's just um, easier to write. Then if I'm in zero and I read a B, I go to one, right? I'm in zero, I read a B, I'm in one. Then let's do uh, zero two. So for zero two, if I read an A, I go to myself. If I see a B, I go to one. Um, for one, if I see an A, I go to one, two. Um, if I see a B, I go to two instead. Okay. Let's do uh, two now. If I'm in, um, well, actually let's do it in order. Let's not do two, let's do one, two. If I'm in one, two, and I read a A, I go to zero, one, two. If instead I read a B, I go to two, okay? 
what's next on the list? Q2. So if I'm in Q2 and I read an A, I go back to uh, 0, 02. Um, if instead I'm reading a B, I go to the empty set, say the empty set. Okay. And here the empty set, the empty set, what it's actually doing is it's acting as the trap state. Okay. So it's acting as the trap state because here you can see that for any outgoing um, outgoing input, it's always going to be, go back to itself. Okay. So what do I have left? I have zero, one, two. So if I'm in zero, one, two, and I read an A, I go back to myself. If instead I read a B, I go back to one, two. Okay. So I'm almost done. The only thing I have to do now is add my final states. Okay. So for the final states, right? The final states are going to include um, all of the, so all of the, the sort of uh, sets that contain at least, so that contain at least uh, one uh, state Q in my set of final states, okay? So in this case, the only final state happens to be Q0. So in this case, um, in this case, zero two is going to be a final state because it contains Q0. And zero one two is going to be a, a final state because it um, contains Q0. And also, of course, Q0. Maybe, let, let's say just, just, just for now, okay, suppose, uh, suppose that uh, Q2 uh, was, was the final state, okay, and Q0 was not, okay? Then what you would need to check, okay, you would need to check if lambda uh, was accepted or if lambda belonged to your language, okay? If it did, if it did, then you would need to make your initial state also final, okay? Um, so the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, even though your initial state is always going to be Q0, um, and in, in, for this sort of fictitious, fictitious example here, Q0 does not contain Q2, Q0 is going to be a final state because lambda is accepted. So this is sort of an extra check, extra check that you need to remember to do, okay? So that finishes off NFAs to DFAs. Um, the other TA actually uh, very, very nicely, she, um, she converted this to a, um, a DFA, but then she also minimized it. So if you want extra practice, so as extra practice for um, minimization, okay, you can use uh, uh, sort of this NFA, uh, sorry, this DFA as your, so this is your starting, uh, your starting uh, DFA M. And then this should be your minimal, minimal, your corresponding minimal DFA, okay? And so one last thing I wanna talk about in this tutorial is uh, now that we've talked about NFA to DFA conversion, we can con conclude, we can essentially conclude, so there's a typo here, we can conclude that the set of all languages accepted by NFAs is exactly equal. So it's exactly equal to the set of all languages accepted by DFAs. What does this imply? This implies that DFAs and NFAs uh, have the same uh, computational, so computational power. So one or the other isn't more powerful. So that's, that might be surprising to you because non-determinism seems like it, it searches more, but in fact, um, it doesn't matter that it searches more. The languages accepted by N N DFAs are the same as the ones accepted by NFAs. And sort of the, the proof for this that you can also find in the lecture notes is first of all, every DFA is an NFA, okay? Why? Because remember the only difference between a DFA and an NFA is the transition function. Okay, you can think of the transition function for a DFA to always be uh, a set containing a single state, Q prime, okay? And then this satisfies the sort of condition of the NFA, okay? So essentially a DFA is like an NFA, but it doesn't use that extra uh, useful tool of non-determinism, okay? And then we just showed that every NFA can be converted into a 
DFA, okay? So that means that um, if your DFA accepts a language, then you can find an NFA that accepts the same language. And if an NFA accepts a language, you can find a DFA that accepts the same language, okay? So then what this means, this corollary, what it tells us is that um, to check if a language is regular, so remember in tutorial two, we said that to check, to prove that a language is regular, you, uh, you need to find the DFA that accepts it. That was one way of checking if something is regular. So now another way is to find an NFA that accepts it, okay? So if either a DFA or an NFA, if you can find either a DFA or an NFA that accepts a language L, then that means that language is regular. So we can just say that uh, L is regular, L is regular, if there exists an FA, so an FA is either a DFA or an NFA, right? It's either a DFA or an NFA, okay? Um, and so if a, if a NFA exists that accepts the language L, then that language is regular, okay? So that's it for this tutorial. Again, I feel like this is going to be the theme. I hope not. I hope it's not going to be the, no. No, when did it stop sharing? Oh, wait, what?